Hello and welcome to PocketGamer.biz's YouTube channel. I'm John Jordan and this is our monetization playlist. So the game we're looking at today, as you can see, um, is a horse game. And often, not the sort of game we often look at. So this game is called um, Photo Finish Horse Racing. And the reason it's interesting is it's kind of a one-man band has kind of created it. So it kind of has the gameplay that you'd expect from a horse game. Uh, we're not really looking at the gameplay today. Um, but what's interesting is the game came out. The actually guy who developed it, Ian Cummings, was a you know, long-term, long-time developer. He worked at EA, uh, was creative director of the Madden series, worked at Zynga, so he knows the industry. He even knows free-to-play games, um, and he thought he'd do something that, like a little bit niche. But the game came out, and he realised he didn't really um, understand how to market a game and how to get a game out there to an audience. So he um, looked to work with a publisher. So this is, the game was out on the App Store. Often publishers say they want to work with games before they are released because you have the more opportunity to um, kind of work on, on things that you think are wrong and improve things. But this game was out, so there wasn't, that wasn't the option. So he worked with a company called um, Tilting Point who uh, kind of positioned themselves as kind of a next generation uh, mobile publisher. So they work very closely with developers adding particularly things like um, user acquisition and analytics and how you deal with analytics and how you feed that back into um, the game, retention, monetization, all that kind of stuff. So we're looking at a bit of monetization today. Um, so we can look here, there's some obvious things. So we're going to specials here. This is the the hard currency. So that's you know, it's all fairly standard horseshoes. We buy horseshoes, we use the horseshoes in the game. Also bucks, so bucks again. Um, and also at the bottom you see where there's a watch to earn. Um, things that we can watch a video to get some currency. So we press on that. Okay, so there we go. Um, 30 seconds of, of watching Double Down. So the reason it's kind of <laughs> maybe worth having a quick look at this is um, like a rewarded video ads are a big thing um, happening for the last year or so really in what we would call indirect monetization. So people um, in games want to get some currency. Um, so often people don't want to spend money or it's the first kind of stage to spending money, giving them a lot of kind of free free resources because then you start using the resources in a way and then you understand the value of using resources and then you um, then can see why you're spending money. Often it's difficult for people to go, I spent 10 bucks, how, what, how did that, how did I earn 10 bucks of, of reward or 11 bucks of reward in the game? Obviously you want the reward to be seen as more than the money. So anyway, this was a um, casino game. Um, whether that's appropriate for this, I don't know. But I've owned one horseshoe, so there we go. <laughs> so not not a massive, um, not a massive thing. So I could pay. I basically earned a cent. I got one. I could pay five dollars and get a hundred. There we go. So not a massive um, increase in, in value there. But there we go. Um, I can connect to Facebook. We see there and earn twenty five horseshoes. So a bit more. Um, so that's to uh, get my maths right actually. So it's um twenty five is is um. A quarter that's, that's about a dollar, isn't it? About four cents a horseshoe. So, um, th that's kind of one of the monetization things. You also see there's a buck sale going on, so sales are, are, are good. So, um, I'm not quite sure where the sale is. That looks like a standard monetization, maybe anyway. But it tells us there's some sort of limited edition thing that's good for driving people back. Um, so we're going to actually what we do in the game. This is more kind of um, a, a kind of a hub system. So, we can see you play races, obviously. Um, I can play this circuit race and win some some um, bucks um, but obviously the point is obviously I'm very early in the game I'm just started it's really, only really showing this so I go to my stable this is my horse what do I do what am I spending the money on this is important because obviously you want to actually have yeah, giving you this value so I can upgrade my harness I can upgrade my bridle I can upgrade my saddle I can upgrade my stirrups all these things um, so we can see I've got um, just over 28,000 so I can purchase an upgrade there I can upgrade it again, obviously, you can see it's going up from level 1 to level 3. Um, what else could be upgraded? I've run out of money already, um, so I have to go back here. So I'm going to upgrade the shoes. Put just upgrade. Now I'm out of money. Um, so we can see my stamina's gone up and my finish has gone up. Um, let me see. Um, there's also, obviously, horse racing game, online stakes, so I can... Um, it's a different event. There's a premier race as well. Um, but I need, it's telling me my acceleration isn't good enough to enter that one. Um, so, so we can see, um, so even my speed's not good enough, so I can't, I spent the money on the wrong thing, so that's not so very good of me, is it? I spent the money on the wrong thing, okay. Um, now the reason, um, we're kind of talking, looking at the monetization, because that's kind of how, how the game <laughs> obviously makes money, but what's interesting with the, the deal with, um, Tilting Point was it came in, the game was already out there, um, and they started spending, um, some advertising money, user acquisition, um, and, and they saw some pretty um, 
staggering results really so it was a good core game that just couldn't find an audience it wasn't like a game that had been downloaded lots of times and people weren't playing or paying in it it's just a game that hadn't found its audience so daily downloads were increased by over a thousand percent and that also drove um, organic installs so often if you've, you're paying for kind of installs then if it's a good game people will go oh have you played this and you know people who like horse racing i suppose um the interesting thing was um the user acquisition campaigns were actually run during the um so the horse racing season in the US, so things like the um, this is Triple Crown in the US, um, so the Ken Kentucky Derby, these, these kind of races in the start of May, so that was in the public consciousness, so you were spending money about horse racing game and people who cared about horse racing were caring about horse racing, so that obviously encourages people you know, to play this game because they're into the, in the horse racing season, so you're getting them at the right time. Um, and then because there's these kind of new, there's these there's these kind of a, I can't show it here because I've, I've already had it there, but there's like a daily bonus. So every time you come in, there's a daily bonus. So that's a very good way of driving. Most free play games would have this now that every time you go into the game, you get a reward, encourage you to come back. Um, so it actually grew its daily retention by almost 2,000%. And the important bit is obviously from a very low base, but revenue grew 30 times, 32 times. So you, there's a, I mean, there's nothing particularly unstandard about what this monetization is, system is. You can see there's like a, there's a mystery crate as well. From, like, this is like a more like a um, yeah, I mean, we see kind of crates and and and, and chests and stuff in in Clash Royale and things. So this is just a kind of participation. Um, if I finish it almost like a finish a race, I might get something. If I win a race, I'm going to get more. So we can see there's other ways of interacting with the game and getting the things I need. Probably in this case will be re resources like bucks that I need to upgrade the horse and get into the in, into the um, progress in the game. That's all about this. What this um, spending money and resources in the game is to get a better horse, upgrade your horse. Let's quickly do a horse race. I, mean, I probably won't. Won't even let me do it. The horse is not well prepared. Okay, let's play anyway. So the gameplay is very simple. Um, so to start the race, you could just like kind of tap options that we've seen in kind of golf games like Tiger Woods. So I'm just kind of tapping. Obviously, underlying how well I'm going to do in this is the strength of my horse in terms of have I upgraded and bought the right bridles and stuff. And obviously, in the horse race again, you can buy more horses. I'm not going to win this one. So there, there is a kind of element of actually doing something. It's not just auto play. So I'm going to be second. Oh, I lost. Oh, because it was the kind of thing where I had to win to get anything. But I still get a little bit. Yeah. Okay, a uh, tough loss. Uh, watch a quick video, so again, I'm seeing the video, um, what, driving video so I can get back in and, and and play. So that's just a quick round at the monetization of, of photo finish horse racing. And what's interesting is this game kind of came out and didn't have this level of monetization in there and certainly didn't have the, the kind of audience and the user acquisition going on. Um, so it's kind of interesting that often we say games need to have all that kind of stuff in before they go out. Obviously, it's better if they do have that; it's easier. Um, but even when games are released um, and don't have this kind of stuff in, you can kind of harder, but you can retrofit them um, and still be successful. So um, thanks for watching. Um, that was our uh, monetization playlist. Um, so we do a lot of this analysis of free-to-play mobile games. So if you subscribe, you won't miss anything.